energy, energy, energy. So today we're going to talk about why energy is important, the most important source of energy, and why controlled feeding is best. Measurements of energy, gross, digestible, metabolizable energy. Also going to talk about nutrients, calories, and comparing different foods and the energy each provides. Get ready for some maths. How to calculate energy requirements, an accurate but complicated formula versus a simple but overestimated formula. And of course, adapted from all of these books and resources. And just a quick recap on energy. So the ultimate source of energy is the sun, produces solar energy, plants absorb that, turn it into nutrients. Then those nutrients are eaten by the mouse and then the cat eats the mouse and nutrients are pulled from the mouse. They're pulled apart completely and rebuilt into new cat proteins. So meeting daily energy needs is crucial for the performance of the body's metabolic work. And the energy density of the food determines the quantity of food that is eaten each day. So we're going to go into deeper on how much to feed your cat per day based on the food and your cat's weight. This also affects the amount of all nutrients that an animal eats. So animals eating energy-dense foods will consume less of the food. However, the concentration of other critical nutrients should be higher to ensure sufficient intake. And the opposite is true in that animals eating low energy-dense foods will consume more. So other nutrients may be needed to be decreased to avoid excess or toxic levels. Why is energy important? Look at Jericho, he's so energetic right there. <laughs> All animals rely on a constant source of dietary energy to survive. So energy is the first requirement that we have to meet in the diet. Energy is necessary for the performance of the body's metabolic work. This includes maintaining and synthesizing body tissues, engaging in physical work, and regulating normal body temperature. So other than water, energy is the most critical component that must be considered. The energy of the food determines how much the cat will eat. This also affects all other nutrient requirements, protein, fat, vitamins, minerals, everything. Fat is the main form of stored energy in animals. Triglycerides are the most important form of fat in the diet, and any excess energy is converted to triglycerides for storage. Portion controlled feeding is the best way to prevent overeating and weight gain. This helps the cat's energy balance, growth rate, and weight status. And that's exactly why, well, one of the reasons why the first step in my transition plan to better quality food is portion controlled routine scheduled meal times. We have some different measurements of energy. So we have gross energy, which is displayed as GE. That's the total minus fecal energy. So energy lost during poops. That equals the digestible energy or DE. Then we take digestible energy or DE and we subtract urinary energy and gaseous energy to get metabolizable energy or ME. So defining these measurements of energy further, gross energy is the total amount of potential energy available in a food before digestion. So think of gross pay is your income before taxes. Gross energy is the total amount before digestion. Some energy is lost through excretions and radiant heat. Digestible energy, DE, is the gross energy content of food minus energy lost in feces. And metabolizable energy, ME, is DE, so digestible energy, minus energy lost in urine and gas. Energy requirements are typically expressed as kcal of metabolizable energy, or you'll just see kcal of ME on the pet food label. So measurements of energy continued, we have nutrients, fats, carbohydrates, and amino acids are the energy containing nutrients in food. The main form of stored energy in animals is 
fat. So the other nutrients, vitamins and minerals, they are not energy containing nutrients. Fats, carbohydrates, and amino acids are. Calorie refers to the amount of heat energy necessary to raise the temperature of one gram of water from 14 and a half Celsius to 15 and a half Celsius. Then for pet foods, we have kilocalories or kcal and kilojoules or kj. These are often used to express energy in pet food because calories are too small to measure for animals. So one kcal equals 1,000 calories and kilo is 1,000, so that's how you can remember. Kcal is 1,000 calories. One kcal is 1,000 calories. And then to convert kcal to kj, you would multiply the kcal by 4.184. Energy from food. Approximately 50 to 80% of the dry matter or DM of the diet is used for energy. Animals are capable of regulating energy intake to meet daily caloric requirements unless they are given an all-access 24-7 buffet of highly palatable and energy-dense foods like processed dry food. And that's why portion-controlled feedings were mentioned previously as the best way to maintain ideal weight because it can prevent overeating. Energy densities of different foods are shown on the right. I used animal diet formulator ready-made recipes for the homemade, raw, and homemade cooked data and Instinct, the brand Instinct, for the commercials since they make every type of food. So we'll take a look at the difference in the amount that you would feed. Both homemade options require around the same number of kcal per day and ounces to feed per day. So for this is all based on the recommendations for a 10-pound cat. So for homemade raw, we have 42 kcal per ounce. For homemade cook, it's 46. And the amount that you would feed for the homemade raw is 4.93. So you would have a little over 207 kcal per day. Homemade cooked, you would feed four and a half ounces and 207 kcal per day. Most of the commercial options have fewer kcal per ounce, so more food is necessary. Very interesting. Commercial raw and freeze-dried raw have about half the amount of kcal per ounce, so you would feed almost double the amount of food, so eight ounces compared to just under five, and it's also a few kcal per day less, so 196.8 compared to 207 kcal per day, based on these recommended feedings. And then dry food is the most kcal dense, but those ingredients are mostly carbs. So we have kcal per ounce for dry food is 63. Recommended feeding for a 10 pound cat is four. So you're feeding less compared to homemade raw, homemade cooked, and then the commercial raw and wet food. But interestingly, you're getting more calories, kcals per day, 252. And the math on the wet food doesn't really work out if you were to multiply the kcal per ounce times the recommended feeding, but this kcal per day is what the website recommends for a 10 pound cat, so that's why I included that. And this particular dry food contains approximately 54 grams of carbs per 1,000 kcal, or 80.5 kcal coming from carbs. So yes, you don't have to feed as much, it's more dense, but those kcals, you know, there are carbohydrates in those kcals. How to calculate kcal per day, and this example is a dry food. So if we're using the example on the left, the food contains 477 kcal per cup. So if we divide that by eight for eight ounces in one cup, we would get approximately 60 kcal per ounce. So use a digital food scale to weigh how much food that you're currently feeding. Let's say you're feeding three quarters of a cup daily, 60 kcal times six ounces, which is three quarters of a cup, is equal to 360 kcal per day. The recommended feeding for a 10 pound cat on this bag says two thirds of a cup daily, which is equal to around 5.3 ounces. So the actual recommended feeding is 318 kcal per day compared to if you were feeding three quarters of a cup and you would get 360 kcal per day. How to calculate kcal per day. This is a wet food example. So this food contains 57 kcal per pouch. 
let's say you're feeding four pouches daily, four times 57, you would have 228 kcals per day. But the recommended feeding on the pouch for a 10 pound cat is 4.5 pouches daily. So four and a half pouches daily. 4.5 times 57, 256.5 kcal per day. And this example is with raw food. This food contains around 35 kcal per ounce. Let's say you're feeding four ounces daily, four times 35 is 140 kcal per day. So a lot less than the previous two examples. The recommended feeding for a 10 pound cat would be 4.8 ounces daily. And this is just based on feeding 3% of the body weight. So 4.8 ounces times 35 kcal would give you 168 kcal per day. So again, it's really dependent on the type of food because the kcals per ounce are very different because the ingredients are very different. And the amount that you feed, you know, is really dependent on your individual cat. So these are just guidelines to give you a starting point. And then of course you would weigh your cat and determine how much to feed based on ideal body condition score and also the weight of your cat. And we're gonna go into more of the practical aspect of it in the next lesson. Math's too complicated. <laughs> Resources like these slides, printables, and calculators will be in the description. I'm also creating this course in a course format so you'll have everything. So just check the description for the details and stay tuned. I'm creating this course to make this easier for everyone to understand and practice. It's important that you understand these principles to have a confident conversation with your cat's vet, family members, roommates, friends, etc. when you talk about your cat feeding choices. At the end of the day, your cat is your cat and your responsibility, so you are in control. I'm building this course to give you confidence and understanding in everything that you feed your cat. So grab your cat's food label and do the maths. Comment below how much you're currently feeding and if it's the correct amount based on the recommended feeding. And get ready for some more maths. Finding each nutrient's calorie. So for protein, you're going to use the guaranteed analysis and take the protein percent from the cat food label and multiply it by 3.5. The fat percent from the food label is multiplied by 8.5. For carbs, we'll have to do some maths to determine the carbs because AFCO does not require carbs on the guaranteed analysis. So we're gonna take 100 minus the protein percent, fat percent, fiber percent, moisture percent, and ash percent. And that's going to give us the approximate carb amount as if it was on the guaranteed analysis. And then that percent will be multiplied by 3.5. So in this example, we have 34% protein so we multiply that by 3.5, so we have 119 calories from protein. For fat, we have 11% times 8.5 is 93.5 calories coming from fat. For the carbs, we take 100 minus 34 minus 11 minus 7 minus 10 and minus 3. Ash isn't actually listed, so I'm just using 3 as a general average for dry food. So for carbs, as if it would be on the guaranteed analysis, it would probably be around 35%. So we take 35 times 3.5, 122.5 calories coming from carbs. So this dry food has more calories coming from carbs than it does protein and fat, not surprising. And I use dry food instead of wet food or raw just to show an example of the carbs. And if you're here, I, I know you don't need convincing that dry food is bad, but some people seeing these videos might get a little turned off by the math, so I want to include these little nuggets of inspiration <laughs> so that we can remember, and especially during the transition when cats get picky, so that we can remember that homemade food is the ultimate goal. So we have energy requirements for adult cats. So we have some formulas on the left, and the accurate but complicated formulas are already converted in this chart, so you don't have to do the maths for that. This chart already does that math for you. But just to, just to explain, the accurate but complicated formulas. So we have resting energy requirements, which is RER on this chart. So that equals 70 times the body weight in kilograms to the 0.75 power. So that's resting energy. Maintenance requirement for lean cats, MER, that's this fourth column here, 
you're going to take 100 times the body weight of kilograms to the 0.67th power. Again, you don't have to do these formulas. This graph already does the formula. The last column is for the maintenance requirement for obese cats. So this chart represents the more accurate way to determine kcals per day. So on the left is the body weight represented in kilograms, and then the second column is the body weight represented in pounds. Then you have resting energy requirements and then maintenance requirements for lean cats and obese cats. The simple formula is simple, but it's overestimated. So for active cats, the kcal per day is equal to 80 times your cat's body weight in kilograms. And you can use this chart to, to for the conversion so you don't have to do the maths. So three kilograms is 6.6 .6 pounds, 3.5 kilograms is 7.7 .7 pounds, and so on. And for inactive cats, the kcal per day requirement is 70 times the body weight in kilograms. So just using Jericho as an example, he weighs around 9.7 pounds. He's a lean and active adult. So with the accurate but complicated formula, again, that chart does the conversion for you, he would have to consume around 274 kcal per day. For the simple but overestimated formula, we would get around 360 kcal per day. So that's almost an additional 100 kcal per day. So do maths and comments your, comment your cat's energy requirement using both formulas. And again, you can use this chart that already does the conversion for you for the accurate formula, but let me know what the simpler but overestimated formula says. Up next, <laughs> in our next lesson, we will dive deeper into water, which is the most essential nutrient. Please post your questions in the comments so I can gather all FAQ and make an FAQ video to include in each lesson. Some things to prepare for now. Start feeding your cat at scheduled meal times. This is the first step in my transition plan. Calculate how many kcal you're currently feeding daily. Then calculate how many kcal you should be feeding daily. Start to slowly transition to the correct number of kcal daily. All transition plan options are included at catacles.com. So there's text, video, course layout, and ebook. What you choose is just dependent on how you like to learn. And thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next lesson.